Um, and then can you talk us through, because uh, obviously you've done House of Cards and TV as well, uh, can you just talk us through kind of the, the sort of faster paced nature of TV? Right. I mean, it was like, I came into House of Cards because of David Fincher. I had done three movies with him, and he was going to do this. He, did a, he directed the first two episodes of House of Cards, and he was sort of the, the overall showrunner of the thing. And Fincher asked me to, uh, he'd been work, we've been working on getting a slate list system happening for the cameras. We started on Benjamin Button, we actually were able to, to do it because we had a recorder that was not on the camera. And uh, it captured the, the image on a separate recorder. And in that separate recorder, I could feed an AES audio. So I sent it. Oh, my Mac's saying low battery. Hold on one sec. Nope. Yep. So anyway, we had this single recorder that recorded the, the image as well as the audio. So we were able to do a slateless system because uh, there was the person who operated the recorder who could type in the metadata for the scene number and stuff, and I would send my metadata for my audio. So you didn't need to have sticks at all because it was it, the machine knew this is take five, this is take six, etc. Then when we went to social network, we started with the red cameras and... Uh, um, we had a lot of time code issues with the early reds in terms of keeping sync. Yeah. Uh, so we had a really hard time because Fincher wanted to go slateless, and we and we worked really hard on that. And then when we did Dragon Tattoo, we got the new reds, which were at the time Scarlet or something. I forget which generation it was. Epic, I think it was the Epic. And uh, they had. Uh, and I worked a lot with the red people to try and work out all our time code bugs, but we're still having problems, which I actually now, in retrospect, believe might have been uh, a problem with some of the Diva software, the time code software in the Diva, because we had an update uh, that seemed to fix it. But meanwhile, we were trying to fix it because we thought it was a red problem, because originally it was a red problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, then... When we got to House of Cards, Fincher was like, I really don't want to have any slates. You know, we've got to move really fast on this thing, so we've got to work it out. So I went down to Red, like, um, for a couple of weeks, like every, every few days a, a, for a couple of weeks to try and work out all these time code issues. And we finally solved it, and we had it working great. So we had no slates at all in House of Cards, which, you know, enabled us to run that much faster because we didn't have to ever slate anything, which is nice. And I would just enter my metadata on my recorder, which I can actually do, like when I'm recording, I can go into the take I'm currently recording, I can change the metadata. So if we've gone from, in America we do, like well, let's say we're shooting scene 15, the next setup will be called 15A, the next, a different setup we call 15B, so we do like five takes to 15A, and then we move on to 15B, take one. I can change all that information in my recorder while I'm recording, so... I can always make sure that the metadata is always correct for whatever it is that we're shooting. So, and then we made a, a red, and I made the system so, so we could merge my data onto the picture. So when they, when you put in my audio, it automatically it sunk up all the audio, but it also brought all the metadata over. So any clip that you looked at, you could tell the exact scene and take number. And it became, it's kind of amazing. I mean, I watched it. It'll take like a whole. Half a day's work and doing like two minutes will have it entirely sunk, entirely everything playable. It's amazing. 